So today I'm using these supplies. That's the typical standard Zentangle recommendation. But as most of you know, you can use any supplies you like. You don't even have to use a black pen. If you wanna use a purple pen, go ahead. Uh, so anything goes. The most important thing is that we're relaxing and just focusing on each stroke at a time. The first thing we do is we write our name on the back of our tile. And if you're using a piece of paper or a sketchbook, just write your name somewhere in today's date, which is 3-24-21. And then where are you? I call it Zoom Tangle. You could put Zen Tangle on Zoom with Jackie Rose. Anything to designate where you are. If this is your very first time doing Zen Tangle, make sure you write first time ever. I don't think we have anyone, but you never know. And I think that's all. That's all we do. Okay. Uh, you might want to put. I'm going to put the time two to four p.m. Not not that important, but I'm just going to do that. And now when you're ready, take a moment, feel the paper that you're tangling on today. Just uh, take a look at it, feel it, just to start to become mindful, as this is a mindfulness art form. And when you're ready, turn over your tile or get your page ready. And we're going to start with our pencil. And we're going to start to draw a string. And with the pencil, right in the middle, we're going to start to draw a spiral. And it's going to be kind of large. So just watch me for a second. We're going nice and slow. I kind of start almost as if I'm starting to draw a small letter E, and then I come around. And I'm making it pretty uh, thick in between because we're going to be doing something in the middle. We only want one or two layers. So let me just show you what's going to happen next for some of you who really want to uh, be aware of the size, because then we're going to draw a line from each corner like this. Okay. And we're going to be tangling in these sections. So. Um, you could start your spiral in the middle. I would say this is kind of like the size of like a small paper cup bottom or something, but don't worry too much about it. We're just going to get a spiral in the middle. Mine's a little lopsided. Don't try to do it just like me. A lot of times I'm, my goal is to do it very differently and it comes out. This is a little bit thin here, but that's okay. So we do our spiral in the middle and and that's why um i'm doing this in pencil as well in case in case you do want to erase or start over but we usually don't have any erasers in zentangle and then once you have your spiral we're going nice and slow and relaxed Let me zoom in a little bit more this is kind of lopsided so don't try to do it exactly like me just and then um, you can draw your line. So what we're doing here is from each corner of the tile, we're drawing a straight line. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. We do not use rulers uh, from each corner to the outer layer of that spiral. Okay, so now what we're going to do, and you can do this with pencil or pen. I'm going to pick up my pen now. We're going to focus on the spiral. So today's theme is uh, reticular and fragments. Some of you may have gotten that um, notice later. And uh, reticular are is like a grid or a, almost like a pattern or part of a pattern where we put fragments, right? So the so the, each one is going to, and I'll explain a little bit more as we go. But so this is a spiral reticular because we're going to be putting a fragments of patterns inside. So we're going to start first of all. I'm going to close this up right here to make kind of an orb, a circle, um, and that's what I'm going to try to do with each one of these. So I'm drawing a circle, an orb. We call it an orb, so it's not a perfect circle. Um, and I'm doing it fairly a good size because we are going to be 
putting something in these orbs. So we're draw fitting these orbs. They're touching. I, so I trace along the edge, turning my tile. So we're just drawing an imperfect circle at a pretty good size because we're putting something in it. And we're gonna fill up this whole spiral Nice and slow and relaxed. I, I, I go a little bit faster just so you can see, but try to go slower than me. That's a little line, a little poem. I have to put that together. So I'm turning my tile to get a comfortable angle. Tracing along the edge. It, don't worry if it looks messy. Let go of what it looks like. We release the outcome. And then at the end, we're pleasantly surprised. Make sure you're in nice alignment, good position. Your pen isn't being held too tightly. You're relaxed and you're breathing. And now we're focusing on each stroke, drawing nice and slow. And just because you do the pencil line doesn't mean you can't go out of the pencil line like I might go a little bit bigger here because that ended up being smaller than I wanted. So th that's why anything we draw in pencil and pen for that matter. Um, disappears and we don't have to stick within the lines ever so everyone is going to look different everyone who's who's doing this now will be doing this differently. So now I'm going to show you what's going to go inside each one of these circles. So Zentangle is about doing the same thing over and over, and we're going to put the same thing in each one of these orbs. So I'll start with this big one just so it'll be easier to show you. And I'm going to put a little dot in the middle, and it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but that'll just give me a frame of reference. And now we're just going to draw an, an art line from that dot and we're going to do that all the way around from that same point drawing a slightly arced line to the edge of that orb and now you can do many or a few doesn't matter So this is a fragment. We just created a reticular. We had a spiral with these orbs that we put in there. And that is the reticular, which is like a net to catch things. Um, and so, and what this reticular in Zentangle is a net that catches fragments. And fragments is a part of a pattern. And not all the fragments are actually from an actual pattern with a name. So um you're going to do this in each orb same thing we have lots of time today this is a two-hour class we're going to go nice and slow we'll be doing shading later And this is all we're doing uh, as of right now. I can always change my mind, but right now, so if some of you are wondering, you know, do I need to, you know, leave room? You don't have to. But with the other thing we're gonna do is at the end, or you can do as you go, any little open spaces here, you can color in with your pen, the background. So as most of you know, if you've taken classes with me before, I encourage you to listen to your inner artist which means if you have an intuitive thought that says, oh, I think I feel like putting orbs in these 
uh, sections where I feel like putting, um, you know, coloring some of these in. Listen to your inner artist. That's your inner artist coming through. Don't try to draw exactly like me. You let go of the outcome, let go of thinking about anything. And if you have an intuitive thought that just appears, pay attention and feel free to draw anything that feels good to you. So let's take another deep breath in and out. Turn your music up if you want. I'm going to stop talking until we finish this. Now, if you finish before we move on to the next step, just relax, close your eyes, look out the window, tangle something else, just relax. And try to slow it down even more to see how slow you can go. How slow can you draw each one of these lines? Taking a breath with each stroke. Now just remember anything goes in Zentangle. Anything goes.
And as you're coloring in the background, really focus on the coloring. Everything is deliberate. We just want to, whatever we're doing, we want to give it our undivided attention. So really enjoy the coloring. Taking your time. Now there's no mistakes in Zentangle. There's no right or wrong. Although I always say there's everything's right, there's no wrong. And I say that because I just did something right here. I went right into this orb by, by mistake. But you see, everything happens the way it's supposed to. And that was meant to be. And if it's not, it won't show up. Nobody will care. Nobody will notice. It will not have an impact negatively on your design. As Untangle teaches us a nice life lesson that when we make a mistake, we, sh we should just accept it and move on. Don't be hard on ourselves. It is what it is, no big deal. And just remember, yours will mo most likely not look like mine at all. And for those of you who, if you're here for the first time, again, we don't have many, we might have one or two. Um, at, at the end, we do a group photo, this opportunity to, to chat and share, just so you know, no pressure though. <laughs> uh, but right now we're in uh, meditation and you're also welcome to put comments or questions in the chat at any time. And you know what I think we're going to do? I think we're going to shade this. You know, usually I wait till the end to shade everything, but I think we'll just, since this, I don't think it will interfere with anything else. Um, I'm going to shade this and then, uh, and if you're not ready to shade it, you don't have to, you can wait till later. But I'm going to pause the recording because we have to do our tortillon toast. Uh, pause. So we just did a little shading. We just put a little graphite on the bottoms of each one of these orbs and then smoothed them out. And on a couple, I colored a couple of these sections in, like one section in the white area on some of these orbs, just for a little drama, if you will. So for the recording, I forgot to resume before we did that. So I apologize, but I just, all you have to do is put a little graphite on the bottom of each one or one area and just blend that in with your tortillon in circular motions. Okay. And when you're done with that, 
um, I'd like you to just shake out your wrists, move your body around, just a mini body break, not, not a formal break yet. We'll take a break in about a half hour or so, uh, but just to kind of loosen up those shoulders and wrists, give your body a little break. Maybe take a breath in and out. Give a little stretch. All right, so we're going to move on now to another reticula. So each one of these sections is going to have a different reticula, which is really like a grid, you know, the foundation to put in the um, patterns. So it's going to be so much fun. I know you're already having a great time. So now I'm taking my pen. I'm going to focus on this left side here. And you could always change the angle. Um, of your tile if it's more comfortable. So I'm actually going to trace over this line with my pen. And we're going to start to draw a grid or just really straight lines. Now we don't want too much space in between, but not too little. So I'm going to draw another line parallel to that one. So you can see to give you an idea of the space I'm leaving. Again, it really doesn't matter. You don't want it too big. You don't want it too small because we're going to be putting stuff in there. Um, so right now, I'm sorry, it's a little blurry. Let's see if we can fix that. And so I'm going to keep that, try to keep that angle, giving it these straight lines, almost as if I'm starting to draw like a checkerboard. But when, but don't do the, keep just going in this direction. And we're going to do something a little bit different when we go the other way. So just draw the lines like this, leaving some space in between. So just get your lines in first. You know, thinking about um, as if you were going to do like a checkerboard. So now I'm going to turn this a little, well, I'm not, not going to turn it. You can turn it if you want to, but I'm going to keep it up so you can see what I'm doing. So now I'm going to draw a line in a diagonal, very close to here. I think I'll take this corner right here and I'll just draw this line in a diagonal like that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I've got this diagonal, and then when I get to this row, I'm going to reverse the angle this way. So think about zigzag, we're going like that, and then here. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. We're alternating the diagonal directions with each one. I'm going to wait on that one. So if you know the pattern Jonquil, this is the grid for um, this. Jonquil is actually a pattern that starts off like this. So this is the grid. So now we're going to uh, start, do it again. I'm going to leave a space almost as if I want to kind of make a square. And I'm going to do the same exact thing I just did. So the same angle, move over a little bit of an angle. All right, so same same direction, and then the next one, same thing. So we'll do the same thing, giving that same angle, zigzagging, but in each row, the lines are going the same direction. And then you'll do that a few more times until this is filled up. Keep it in mind, we're going to be putting something in each one of these blocks, these sections. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Whatever you do, you do absolutely fine. So many times I used to, I've gotten these directions mixed up, but that's why we focus and we go slow. Okay, 
it looks cool just like that but we're going to be putting some stuff in there and when you're done we're going to do the same thing on this side right we're going to use the same reticula it's going to be a different fragment when we haven't done our fragment yet but we're going to use the same reticula so we'll draw i'm going to trace over this line and do the same thing and they don't have to have a many rows over here you know we don't focus on the outcome we're just drawing these lines leaving space in between focusing on each stroke nice and slow And I'll give you a minute to do that, and then I'll, sh I'll go the other direction. And when you're ready, do the same thing. It doesn't matter which direction you start in. Um, I'm. Uh, I think I'm going to start, you can even start in the middle. I'm going to start right in the middle, actually. And I'm going to go, since I went this way, I'm going to go this way now. See that the diagonal is going this way. But it doesn't matter. And I'm going to kind of start in the middle, and then I'll continue on either side. So zigzagging all the way down. leaving some space, doing it again. Keep it in mind, each row, the lines go in the same direction. So all the same. I really enjoy drawing these lines. Go nice and slow, focus on each stroke. And so when you get to something like this, like I'm not going to do another one because that, that's a good size right there. That's just going to end right there in that same. All right, so I'm going to um, show you the fragment that's going to go on the left hand side here. And then I promise you I'm going to stop talking for a little while. So the first thing we're going to do is on each one of these sections, on each corner, we're going to draw a line to try to tra triangular off the corner each so pick one a block at a time i'm going to call this a block and just it is very close this is just a small area just corner off those corners with a line and then you'll color those in So I'm going to suggest to do that first. There's going to be something else that we're going to do in each one of these, but let's first just corner off each one, each corner, coloring them in. You can do that in every section. So even these here, we're going to do the same thing. 
And it could be very small. So I'll let you do that for a few minutes. Take your time. And then in a couple minutes, I will show you the next step to this pattern. Now we're just working on the left side, right? Don't do it on the right side, just this, just the left side, because it would be something totally different on that section. Nice and slow, take your time. I realize this can be a little awkward with some of these shapes, but just do the best you can. So I don't have a baby, that's just my cat. She likes to meow when I'm teaching on Zoom. So 
So in a couple seconds, I'm going to show you what goes in these sections. And if you're not ready, that's okay. You can just start and then continue on. Okay. Remember, the goal is never to finish. The goal is to just slow down, relax into each stroke. So I'm going to show you the next uh, part of this pattern. Uh, this alone looks pretty good. Good, you know, this looks really nice. But we're going to take it one step further. So in each one of these, I'm going to turn the tile, and I'm going to draw a line from top to bottom. So in between, in the middle. So we're not, you know, we've got the corners and this is the middle of this section. And then I'm gonna do the same thing going across. So we've just divided in this section in half, both ways. And now in the middle, we're gonna do that same thing, cornering off each section and it creates this little diamond. And I'll show that again. So I'm going to the next, I'm just going to draw a line straight down the middle, each way. And then drawing a line in between each section in the middle, trying, giving that little triangle, making a little triangle, that, and then coloring that in. So it looks like a diamond or a square. We're going to do that in every single section. Nice and slow and relaxed. So even though these are lining up, these lines, they don't have to line up at all. Nothing has to line up. There's no perfection in Zentangle. Now I know with uh, some, some of us might have a little weird shape, but we're still, we can still do it. We can still fit it in there. And if you feel like you want to add something different, you go right ahead. And when we shade this, it's going to really uh, give it a very cool effect.
So it's March 24th, and we have 24 people on the call today around the class. And the class is two to four, and the cost of a class is 24. So you see how I play around with these numbers. So on the right hand side, we're going to do something similar with the corners first, and then we're going to put a design in the middle. And the corners are going to be a little bit different. Let's see how I decide to do these corners. Um, yeah, okay. Just want to make sure I'm doing okay. Yeah. So with these corners, instead of doing a straight line, we're going to curve that line like that and then color those in and we're, we're this is a very small area because we want to leave a big area with our design inside um so we're just giving this slightly art now if you notice i'll show you if i do all four sections this kind of gives it a rounded look which it kind of did on the other side too but this is more a little bit more rounded so we're just curving like that little slight arc, coloring it in rather than a straight line. And it's small, just a little, just curving those edges. And we'll do that on every section. And then in a few minutes, I'll show you what goes inside. And I'm going to show you first on scrap paper. So you should have some sketch scrap paper nearby or your sketchbook where we're going to do that in a little while.
So when you're ready, get out a piece of scrap paper. I'm going to show you the design for this, and then we'll tangle right into a break. So once we, I'll, we're going to do um, show you the design on a scrap paper first, and then we'll put it on here, and then you can start to tangle and take a break, come back and tangle, and um, but I'll let you know what time. Once we start, I'll let you know what time to be back. So um, let's see, scrap paper. It's real easy. I just want to show it to you on scrap paper first. So get your scrap paper out. I'm going to use a little bit thicker pen to show you. So we're doing a, a little mini mooka pattern. So we're going to come up and around and then back. So this can be, uh, this is part, this is just part, the first part. So it can be like this. You can have a big ball at the end or just come around and just then come back and give it a nice tight aura. So don't think about uh, much about what it looks like. Just think of the stroke. We're just coming around all the way around and then curving it and then bringing it back and closing that up. So I'm going to really focus on uh, on this uh, one right here. Now, the next step would be the same thing opposite direction. So we're going to start from this edge and shoot for to meet that. So I'm going to come around doing the same thing, come around and then back. So if you want to practice that a few times, this is what I'm looking. This is what I'm suggesting to go in there. Let's do that one more time. Or I'll demonstrate one more time, then I'll bring it onto the tile. We're going to come around. And I'm doing it big, so we get just get the design in, and then we'll bring it small. And then the opposite direction, come out. You can either hit the other one or come close to it. Okay. Well, you might modify the whole thing, because as you know, anything goes. So I'm now going to bring that to the tile. And I'll show you. Zoom in. So I'm going to start this one kind of in this bottom left corner. I don't, it doesn't even have to be in the corner, maybe a little bit. So I'm just going to, just to give myself some space. Maybe I'll come up. So I'm going to come around. And then around. Okay. And now you can start from the same spot on all of them or change it up. So maybe I'll do one starting from above. I'll give you all a chance to do that anyways. So I might start from a different spot. So I might come down this way. So I'm kind of doing it upside down now. You can reverse direction. Okay. 
If you have a real small space, maybe just do one side rather than both, but I can, I can still fit both in there. So I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to just, I know this is the design I'm putting in and I'm not even going to worry about where I'm going to start. I'm just going to start whatever feels good, what direction, um, and each, each time I do it. So uh, we'll uh, tangle this and then we'll go into a break. Well, if you need a break now, you can break now and then come back to this. It's 3.06. I'm going to say at 3. Um, boy, time goes by fast, huh? 3.15. I'll move on to, that's, so that's like 10 minutes, right? A little less than 10 minutes to finish this with the design and then take a little break. And then we'll move on to the next part. So when I say break, it really means, you know, you might need to, well, it's a great idea to get up and stretch if you need to use the restroom or get a drink or something. Um, I do not suggest that you check your cell phone. Keep the Zen going. We only have another hour, so you can always check your phone later. Just a suggestion. Keep that meditation going. So what we're doing now is the fragment. The reticular was everything we just did up until this mukha. So mukha is the fragment of a pattern. And if you have the book, the primer book, the primer, primer, I always forget how to pronounce it, but um, it has a whole section of reticular and fragments. You can get that at zentangle.com. Great book. All right, so we have two more sections to go before we start shading this whole thing and wait till you see when we shade this over here it's going to look totally different, which it always does anyways right. All right, so now let's focus on the top part here. I just need to full screen okay. Um, so what we're going to do here we're going to do another grid, but it's going to be straight like a typical. Um, typical, uh, you know, grid, like a check, I always call it a checkerboard. So I'm going to draw a straight line right down the middle in this section. So if you see it a little bit there, straight down like that. And then I'm going to start to bring lines on either side, looking for like a, you know, a good amount of space in between.
drawing lines just straight vertically. And then when you're ready, turn, I'm going to turn the tile to do straight lines going the other way. And again, leaving a good amount of space. Actually, I think I'm just going to do that one line. That leaves enough space. And uh, yeah, just that one line. You've got the sections. So now... We're going to do all the corners again, but this time it's going to be different. This time, we're going to come out. So in each corner, you're going to draw a point out. So it's like a V. And it doesn't matter. These could be a little bit bigger, actually. I'm actually going to show you what's going to go next. So first, let's do one section together. So find one block together. Do your points. You can always make these bigger later just by adding onto it if you want. But color those in. And when you're done with that, put a little dot in the middle just for a frame of reference. And from the tip of that point to that dot, we're going to give it this rice shape that we do a lot in Zentangle. I always say think of parentheses or just arcs, you know, you just putting in. And you're going to do that on all four corners. And they can either touch or not touch. I like when they touch but there could also be a space if you wanted to do that. And that's what we're gonna do in, in every section. That's it. And each section can be a different can look different, it can be a different size, they don't all have to be the same. We don't focus on the outcome, just focus on the pattern, staying in the present moment, focusing on that each stroke, nice and relaxed. So the April um, three week series starts April 14th and on week two now I don't like to say, tell people what I'm going to do in case I change my mind, you know, and I always change it for the better. But as of right now week two is going to be more reticular and fragments and i'm going to be doing something really fun with it something different. I'm not going to give it away, but um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Week one is going to be just like a, and the theme is spring. We're going to keep it kind of spring-like patterns, floral, organic, except for, you know, yeah. And then um, the third week we'll do a Zendella. 
but you don't need to have a Zendella to do it. And that's the round tiles. Just in case anyone was interested, because I don't really put that in the description, although I think I did with the Zendella. Just so you know, the, down here, we're going to do something totally different. So don't go putting another grid in here just because we did the same on either side of here. Some of you might be thinking, oh, maybe we're going to do the same thing down here as here. We're not. So just stay in the moment. Focus on each stroke. Nice and relaxed. So I decided on this one here, I just, well, actually, you know what, we'll put in a fourth one here.
recording. So now we're going to do something very different than we've been doing. And we're going to put in the reticular using the pattern Tripoli. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go very close to this edge here and draw a triangle. Now we will be putting something in it, but it doesn't have to be that big or, you know, or that's, it doesn't, don't worry about the size. Just know that we're going to, I'll show you what we're going to do inside of it. Um, so do one triangle with me now, and then I'll show you the rest, but let's, uh, I'll show you what's going to go inside. Um, so we're going to do those corners again, but they're going to be a little bit different. We're going to come out with that arc on each corner. So before we did the arc going kind of in, in introverted, if you will, it went inverted. It was in this day we're going out. So, so each time we've done our corners, it's been different. We did straight lines, we did curved lines, we did diamonds or points. And now we're doing just, just rounding off each corner, coloring those in. And then in the middle, put a little uh, dot for a point of reference. And then from the middle of each one of these corners, I'm just gonna draw a straight line to that middle center. Now, of course, when I say middle, it's not exact, it just gives you a frame of reference. And that's, what, that's all we're gonna do in each one. So what I'm suggesting first, draw your, your reticular first, which is, we draw our triangle, and now for the next one, we're going to draw a line right along one side of the triangle we just did. So we've got a little uh, space in between. Draw that triangle. And you can curve the triangle edges if you want. They don't have to be straight. And each, we're just going to fill out this whole section, drawing triangles starting with the next one or in one side. And they can be all different sizes. You know, it's a good idea to turn that tile. Just fill this whole section with triangles. And then when you're done with that, you could put in the middle, the filling. And remember, if you want to fill it with something different or modify it, you are more than welcome to do that. Always listen to your inner artist.
So the reticula are the, is the triangles and the fragment is what we're drawing inside of the triangles. So if you notice, this is creating a meta pattern. And a meta pattern is a pattern that when you look at it, you can see different patterns emerge from it. So you can, I can see all these different patterns happening here, depending on how I look at this. So all of you are invited, you got the email from me and I apologize if you got too many, <laughs> a million emails, but um, about Shoe Tangle and that is April 7th. That's the next Zen Tangle class I'm offering. I'm taking a little vacation between now and then. Um, anyways, um, so sh you're all invited and you're, all considered VIPs because you've attended a paid class, not just a free class. And I like to always offer things for you guys. So uh, Shoe Tangle is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, in the email, you've got all the links if you wanted to order some shoes or sneakers. Um, but you don't have to. You can bring anything you want. It's kind of a social party. It's not a meditation. There's no instruction. It's just an opportunity for us to tangle together and hang out and do some show and tell. So if you've tangled something else besides um, paper, maybe like I've tangled pouches and tote bags, or maybe you've done shoes. We want to see what you've done. So it's just be an opportunity to come and, and have a good time. So you've got an email on that. Um, all right. So how's everyone doing we're gonna to have to start to shade soon we already did our tortilla on toast so we're ready to shade and we're gonna go back to this if we could find it it's all kind of meshed in here right so i'm gonna go back to this first pattern so the reticular was the pattern john quell which um i'll show you right here john quell i didn't i know it's a little messy it's an original Zentangle pattern and it makes a great reticula. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade over, see this second row here, how it looks like it's kind of going in a different direction than this one. It almost looks like it's going down. I'm going to turn my tile and just watch me first. So I'm using the side of my pencil tip, which I always use the side of the pencil tip because it blends better. And I'm shading that whole section. Okay, this whole section and then I'll blend that in this whole row is being shaded. So I'm going to skip this and then do this one, so the one that kind of looks like it's going down. This to me this looks like it's like on top and that's almost like stairs right and then this here. 
and you can be generous. Uh, I mean, you don't want to go too dark because you don't want, but, and then that whole row is being shaded. And that's all the shading I'm going to suggest for this this section for now. Anyways, I think that's that's uh, enough. Now, what you could do actually with what's left in your tutorial, and you could a little bit, I'm going to put maybe a little bit in the center of the ones that we did not shade. So, kind of giving the diamonds in the middle a shaded aura using what's left on your tutorial. When I say aura, we're just tracing above that same shape. So you can't see it very well, but and it's just very light. But I like that. I think that, that that's good. So I just I just did a little shading all around that middle diamond or square. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing over here. And it looks like, yeah, we'll do the same thing over here. So we're going to just do every other one. I'm going to take, start with the second. Actually, I'm going to start with this one because this one looks like it's going down, like it kind of looks like this. So I would find the row that looks like it's kind of going down. And if it doesn't look any different, then just pick one. And then we do every other one. So I'm just going to do the same thing right over. I'm going to start with this first one here. And every other one, just giving it some shading, that whole row. And then blending it in with the tortillon. And when you do that, you might be able to see more of a 3D effect happening in that pattern. And then what's what's left in your tortillon, if you want, maybe put a little dab in the middle um, of these white ones. I'm just put a little bit like right in the middle of the mukas, just a little dab using what's left in my tortillon just to give it a little shading. Again, I know it's hard to see, but it's there. So with the pattern up here, um, and I'm calling this reticular Knight's Bridge, even though Knight's Bridge is really more of a checkerboard pattern, but because it's kind of like a very, you know, linear, I'm just calling that a Knight's Bridge uh, reticula. The pattern doesn't have a name as far as I know. So it's similar, kind of similar to Bales and Fife, but, it's just a fragment. So I'm taking my uh, tortillon and I'm coloring in the top part of this section. Again, using the side of the tip. So top part of each section, coloring that in. And then blending it with the tortillon, little circular motions or back and forth all different directions. And then I'm going to do the bottoms of each one also. So right directly across from that. So top and bottom of these sections, coloring that in with the pencil. 
And I'm gonna do the same with the next section, top and bottom. Remember there's many ways to shade. This is just one. And then blending it in. And for Tripoli, I think for this, um, I'm gonna color in one section of each triangle. So you've got to find that triangle. And I'm just gonna color in one section and then blend that in. So find another triangle, color in one section, blend that in. That's my kitty cat for you. Oh. All right. Yep. Yeah. I think she's going to get a little sick now. Remember to you turn your tile. I think what else I'll do is I'll just kind of take what's left on the tortilla and maybe grab some graphite and kind of just any white space in the background, just kind of give it a, sh a little blend, giving it some shade. It could be a sporadic shade, just giving it And when you're done, turn it around, look at it in all different directions, and then find a spot and sign it with your chop, your initials, your name. Uh, you do sign it any way you like. I just usually just do my initials somewhere. And really appreciate the time we've spent together and appreciate what you drew. And if you don't like it, you'll like it tomorrow or later on tonight. Um, it happens to me all the time. So I'm going to turn off the recording.